What do you think about Uzuki's mom's crush on Sakura? That's something oh, that man. ever happened to you? I think it's hilarious. And wait, in real life for yeah. me? Oh, <laughs> dude, that's a... <sighs> Ah, uh, uh, okay, romantic life of Rico Fajardo. Uh, I'm thinking about the gals, moms so who I've, I've always had good relationships with the, the mothers of, of the, the, the folks I've dated. And I will say with confidence that all the mothers of the folks that I've dated, all y'all out there, <laughs> your moms are beautiful, for real. And that's, I'm not even, I'm not just saying that as a, as a blind thing, like, you know, there's an old adage where it's like, you know, um, if you're going to the person who you're with, like, if you're gonna get married with them or whatever. Oh, I started though. I think that's <laughs> the there, so. uh, uh, the person that you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get married to like take a look at their parents because that's what they're gonna look like when they get older. And so usually I'm like, look, I'm like, all right, <laughs> way to go, mom. You know, so have you ever been like, this isn't working for me? <laughs> They're looking. Oh no, how sad. I'm like, wow, you're so beautiful. And then I look. Well, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's messed up. No, uh, I don't think so. Not that I, I can think of. But uh, yeah. Do you think she's ever gonna come on Sakurai on the show? Because she uh, seems almost there sometimes. Who's that? U Uzuki's mom. Uzuki's mom? Uh, so Uzuki's mom is played by my pal Terry Hoff. She is also a wicked good writer. Super, super funny. She's got sassy humor. So I think it's hilarious. She's playing Uzuki's mom who's like, oh my god, I just don't know. I'm very demure and, and caught off guard. Because. Uh, <laughs> She actually plays it beautifully. I love all the moments of tension, but it's all you know. It's mis miscommunication, and I think Uzuki's mom. Uh, <laughs> I think she's just at home. She's a wonderful cook, and it's not. Gonna, sorry, I don't know if I'm spoiling anything for these. You need to watch the show. Watch the show now before you continue watching this interview. But Uzuki's mom. You know, keeps having these misconnections, thinking that uh, Sakurai is, is coming on to her. You know the things he says, but he loves cooking. You know, and and he's very thorough about it. But then also Uzuki talks about Sakurai, and she's trying to understand what her daughter's relationship is. And uh, but if you watch the recent episode, you you will understand that Sakurai or uh, Uzuki's mom watches a ton of those dramas, all those dramas where the relationships are twisted and turned and intertwined. So she's like, what if this is like my life? So I think she's just imagining all these things and trying to plug herself into them. Um, so I don't think she will. I think she's too demure. I haven't read ahead in the manga. I mean, I know some stuff that's gonna happen. I usually read like for big story points, but uh, she just seems so sweet. Uh, I think she likes living in her, in her in her fiction, you know what I mean, so. The start of the new season, I was really surprised, like at first there was a different voice actor for the simulcast, like it, it really affected me, like I didn't... Oh, and Uzuki-chan, yeah, yeah, it was good it was, to hang out, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such yeah. a deeper voice, <laughs> like I got you so used up? to you. Yeah. Oh, how funny, yeah, my buddy David Matranga, a wonderful stage actor, uh, you guys missed out, we were talking about theater just now for a few minutes, <laughs> um, wonderful stage actor. And, and voice actor as well. He's a Shoto Todoroki My Hero Academia and a good pal. Right before the pandemic, we were out in uh, Australia together, um, right before everything hit. And so I got to uh, learn about David and you know his, his energy and his life. And he's a really good guy to hang out with. I didn't. I wouldn't. I wasn't sure if they would cat who they would fill in for me because I was. I wasn't sick. I was just busy. I was around doing a bunch of other things, traveling. I had just gotten back, I think, from Scotland and London, and they're like, well, we couldn't get Rico for the, the premiere, and we needed to get the premiere. So sometimes the big advantage of voice work is we can have an actor step in uh, without, you know, uh, if we're doing on camera like this and we have crazy computer generated, you know, graphics where I have a green screen morph suit, and I'm, you know, <laughs> which we, we have probably have the technology now, like the, you can deep fake me on whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I think David did a good job. He, I saw him in the lobby. And I was like, man, you sounded great. And he went, man, I was sweating because he's like, I don't sound like you. I'm like, well, David has such a distinct uh, quality to his voice as well. So I thought it was cool. It was cool to hear one of my friends work on a, a show I've worked on in a while. I thought Sakurai changed completely. Oh, uh, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, oh, I was like, immediately I heard it. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I love David. He's a good friend. So I, I, and I love play. I think some people get very precious. I had some fans reach out and they said, you know, very fired up because they heard my voice and I, you know, originated the, the role in the English dub. I'm like, guys, I'm not precious about it. I mean, when we were just doing a sound check, I, I came up through theater. Like, we all can play Romeo, Hamlet, whatever. Like, it's fine. And we, it's an advantage to be able to, uh, to be able to do it in voice. Like, you could hop in for me. I know your voice is a little bit higher. You have more tenor in your voice. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, it was exciting. I thought it was a treat.
My other buddy, uh, Cliff Chapin, uh, jumped in for me once. And also Alejandro Saab is a good pal. And we all have like, we all live in a kind of musical, the musical notes on the staff, you know, we all kind of inhabit that area. So uh, I love it. I enjoy it uh, because, you know, we all don't sound exactly alike, but, you know, I think we all have our impressions of each other. <laughs> if I were to do David, it has a little bit more of a, like a smoky quality to it. Not that he smokes, but like a, smoky you know, like, quality. no, there's like this, there's this, there's this, there's this thing to it that like has, has like earth to it. And uh, yeah, I like it, but I can't like, that makes me tired. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that the whole time. So yeah. What was your original audition for Sakurai like? My uh, audition for Sakurai, let me think, let me think, let me think. God, it was a while ago. I'm reaching into the data banks of my hard drive in my brain. <laughs> uh, if I recall correctly, my pal Tia Ballard reached out to me because she was uh, directing the show. And uh, she, want, she, I remember she said, we joke around a lot. We have a lot of inside jokes. Did she call you darling? <laughs> Oh, because zero two, uh, which I meant darling in the Franks. Actually, I'm one of the uh, what is it? The 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 Greek letters, not alpha, sigma. One of those ones, uh, epsilon, whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> T is great, dude. She's a beautiful, talented, wonderful hand drawn artist, uh, and yeah, incredible sense of humor. So that show specifically, as it, for those of you who watched it, uh, know that the sense of like there's comedy at every turn. Uh, so it's been a delight to work on that show and have different jokes pay off. My favorite one, I think, is when um, uh, Sakurai loves cats, uh, but cats don't really like him. Uh, I'm actually a cat guy in real life. I've got three cats. They're, I love them. I'm allergic, but I love them. Uh, Sakurai wants to pet a cat. It kind of like hisses and leaves away. It goes away from him. He's sad. Uzuki cares about him, so she goes to get the cat. She gets stuck in a shrub. And so her skirt's up in the air. Sakurai's like, what are you doing? I've got to like, cover you. He goes behind her. He's trying to pull her out of the shrub. In the Japanese, the translation was more or less, uh, hurry up and finish, we have to go. Would you get that joke? That's funny. But it's weird because he's behind, like, pulling her out. So uh, Tia and I put our heads together. And I was like, well, if you're asking me, I think it's funny if these girls are rounding a corner and they catch this scene. And he says, now brace yourself to let it do it real hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's always good because I can tell like if like if you're direct if you guys are directing me and I hear you laugh, I'm like cool. We're all like we're we get the joke. You know what I mean? And that's that's one of the big challenges in, in uh, adaptation and dubbing is like making sure the comedy is preserved. Uh, you're in for a treat, you guys. If you're watching the show, I, we just did an episode. Let's see what day is it today? It is. We're recording this on Sunday, November twentieth at Anime NYC 2022. I just recorded an episode of Uzuki Chan that I like. I I was blushing because I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go over in the English. Uh, so be kind, please. <laughs> what do you think of those shippers that are trying to get a? I, I'm talking about the actual characters in the show, not fans on Twitter. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Wait. How they're oh, all to oh, you mean uh, you mean how funny? I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm like, people can be creative. Uh, well, I'll address both. I'll say the folks who are who out are out and you know of a fan, you know, bring different characters together in whatever form or fashion, and that happens in anything really, whether it's like you know, Game of Thrones, freaking you know, what is it, Stranger Things? It's it's interesting to hear people's like. But I I went to drama school, went to theater school for a long time, and you know I do believe that art inspires a variety of things. So whatever uh, comes out of it, whatever you glean out of it, and whatever your mind starts to uh, put together, it's in service to you. So I think that's awesome. Whatever it is, now if you write a you know 200 page fanfic about it, and you're like you have to read, <laughs> come on, that's that's cool, that's cool. However. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, that's a lot of energy going in, <laughs> but uh, like you said, it's the, the art reflects kind of, you know, um, what is inside of you. So uh, yeah, I would say the, the, the folks who want, uh, again, a little spoilery, but Sakaki, played by my pal Nizi, uh, lovely, lovely gentleman. Again, everyone they cast in the show is just tremendously funny. Uh, Jade Saxton uh, plays, uh, oh, uh, is it Ami? Uh, dude, they're so funny. They are so, so, so funny. Um, both in like personal life and in the show. Um, Jade, I do not think is anything like Ami in the slightest, so it's really <laughs> funny to see her like just be a complete lech. Um, um, thanks for acting in a fun role. And similarly, Nazi is also super respectful, so to have him be this like Don Juan who's like, come on bro, let's like, let's get in there. I'm like, <laughs> you know, uh, so it's very like counter to who they are IRL, 
but delightful to hear them like play at it. So I think that, I don't, I don't know, man. I try to imagine I had friends like that advocating for me. I think they're trying to do me a solid because they see that there is a, something there with Uzuki and Sakurai. But I also think that Uzuki and Sakurai take things uh, at their own pace. You know what I mean? Like, and that is just one of those relationships that no matter who you are in their life, they have to find their own way to make it happen. Um, Sakurai is a little socially uh, anxious. He cares about the people he cares about. But if you watch the show, you realize there's very few moments where he he doesn't want to compromise relationships with people. So he doesn't want to say like the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. So if you watch season one, there's a, a moment where he gets intoxicated and he's singing karaoke and uh, they like, and literally are like, come on, Sakurai, I drink. And it's like, oh man, you're enabling. That's a little, come on, bro, take a shot. You're like, oh, dude, uh, which is all in good fun as long as your friends care about you. And they do, they make sure he gets home safe. But like, uh, at one point, he compliments Uzuki because she's wearing this like bunny suit and she looks good. And he's like, yeah, yeah I think you look really good. And everyone just stops because that's like the only compliment he's ever paid to Uzuki about her like aesthetic features, which she has many, you know, um, which shows he's trying to be respectful. You know what I mean? I think that's really cool. And the only way that he was able to even like, eke out a compliment was to be like righteously intoxicated. He's like, I think you look attractive. It's like, it took all of that for you to say that. So he's got a lot of walls. He's got a lot of walls, but I, I like, I like playing him. I think you have great chemistry with Monica, actually, like on the series. Have you met her in real life or? Absolutely. Yeah. Monica's hilarious, dude. She's amazing. Um, she, uh, also in My Hero Academia, she plays Froppy, yeah. who is one of my favorite characters. Uh, sorry, I know we were talking about Uzuki-chan, but just talk about My Hero for a second. Um, Everyone always asked me what your favorite character was, and it was, it's was it been Froppy for the longest time because I think she's so cute and intelligent and awesome, and Monica plays her so well. Then Mirko came along, the bunny hero. Do you watch, by the way, my hero? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Mirko came along, and I was like, oh, bunny hero's so cool. But uh, still got, yeah, my heart for Froppy, and of course, Bulma and all these things. She's a, she's a rock star, man. She's so good at her gig, and she, like, yeah, teaches me stuff all the time. So I delight in, in really trying to uh, raise my game because comparatively I've been doing this. I'm like a, a rookie compared to Monica, even though I've been doing this for like 11 years, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's nice to be in the booth and to, to hear her voice and work across from her. Because um, when I get when I get the chance to work across from her voice, it changes my performance every time. Like it just makes it so much better. So and that's how you know you have a good team is when they elevate your work, you know? You mentioned fitness before, by the way. I'm curious, can you swim like Sakura, you think? Or uh... <laughs> Man, I, uh, I got like, I have, I have a, a form of uh, like asthma, spasmatic asthma. Uh, whenever I get very excited, like I get a little asthmatic, which is really crappy because if I'm winning a race, I'm like, yes, I'm gonna win. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> little tiny lungs. Um, so I, will, I cannot, excuse me, I cannot swim like Sakura, but I have been told that I'm a good swimmer. Uh, I love the front crawl. Uh, uh, long legs, but I do love swimming. It's the best thing for your body, you guys. Uh, no impact on your joints, gets your heart moving. Uh, very good for you. But yeah, I wish I could swim like Sakurai. Uh, also, and I'm in free, I play Natsuya in free. I wish I could swim like Natsuya. That dude's insane. Uh, Kirishima Brothers. Anyway, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you mentioned before not all shows are like My Hero Academia, but you know, the series we've been talking about has been trending in the romance section now for a few years. Which one? Zek. Oh, it was a good John. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's always in the top. Like, even if you log into Funimation, it's on the front page. Which, I think there's something to that. Yeah, I'm grateful for it, man. It's a... I think I'll, it resonates. And it took me... You know, I always ignore all the heat because everyone's always going to say something. I think at the top, when the show was coming out, even in Japan, uh, they're like, oh, this girl, she's smaller. And they're like infantilizing her. I'm like, the girl's a grown woman. There are women that are shorter, like, you know, she's she's an adult. That was a big thing. They're like, oh, she's like a, a kid. I'm all, y'all, be careful what you're projecting onto this character, <laughs> like, because this is you, you're saying this. Remember that. That's not that's not what's being written. Um, but then I've done this long enough to I'm like, let the people say what they want to say, just make the art, you know what I mean, do the thing. And what, for all I can take care of is my role, which is Sakurai. And Sakurai is a person who is, uh, introverted loves video games and i can uh, man there's so many like things i'm like i love this guy except for he is very like he's it's hard for him to share his heart and i think a lot of uh folks out there resonate with that where it's like man i have so much fun with you i have uh all these feelings and whenever i start to sense them uh no spoilers like you kind of like shut them up but how do they come out how can i how can i put to words uh you know that i care about you that i love you 
Um, and uh, for someone who you is think he as, loves her? Uh, personally, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding, dude? He literally like he loves playing video games with her. It's like the perfect relationship. Uh, I mentioned I was doing doing the sound test. I did some Romeo and Juliet. I played Romeo and Shakespeare Dallas years ago, and uh, I like to talk about like if you met your soulmate, if you met the person that was like lock and key perfect with you, would you know it? Like that would grow with you in your life, like perfectly. And I, you know, perfect's a subjective word, but like for all your needs in life, all the things that happen, all the twists and turns, this person just like moves with you. I suspect that is what Uzuki is or you know for Sakurai they like complement each other in this way they're just trying to find that way together because they are actually both even though loud as hell both of them uh, very very soft inside and it's they're finding they're trying to find how to reveal that to each other which is really sweet I think that that discovery of friendship which is why when you have like you said the, the their, their shipper friends who are trying to push them together I can't tell if that's like a, a sweet thing or a, or a you know kind of a uh, not malicious, but like you know, more of an aggressive thing. But um, I do think they they mean well for their friends, and they're just. I think what they want is for them to like be romantic because once they realize that they get along this way, like it'll maybe open something up for them because they both have walls. Those walls I was talking about, and they're like break them down <laughs> with alcohol <laughs> and you know, sexy times. But yeah, I think they definitely are at their own pace, and it's a it's a sweet relationship to watch unfold. So yeah, and I think that that reflects our fan base. We have a lot of folks who are are little softy romantics after all. So was that tarot card scene where they? <laughs> yeah, know, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. think that would buy? Like, let's say if, if it was you and a girl, or whatever. Like, do, do you think it would bias you to have the relationship, or it would work in real life? You? Like with me? Yeah. I'm not a big. I have friends who love tarot. My one of my closest friends, uh, Felicia Angel, she plays uh, Toru Hagakure in uh, My Hero, a Invisible Girl. Uh, and Mona in Genshin Impact. She adores tarot. And she's really good at it. Uh, and her husband, Graham, is wonderful at it as well. He's a, he's a nurse practitioner and uh, very like, studies Reiki, very spiritual. I love this guy. We, we, literally, uh, there aren't a lot of people I would sit and play Elden Ring for, for three days straight with and like just sit there and just eat pizza and play this game. Um, but Graham, He's he's this, he's a he's a good friend, but he did tarot readings for me. And his energy man, he's like, you know, you got this going on in life. You got that. There's this, and I kind of like take it. I always take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt. I don't want to be a fatalist, even though in my life sometimes I'm like, it feels like this is where I'm headed. Uh, I always like to leave that X factor in the room because I feel if I commit to whatever, here's the death card, man. Or no, you know, it's very dramatic, but like whatever great fortune is coming your way that can be anything you know what i mean great fortune could be i got this cup of coffee and it was free you guys free coffee. 